It is the Praise the Clock show here on PraiseWallRadio.com. We hope you're doing good. Uh, when we read your blog, we touch on any and everything. And uh, I'm sure Toyosi has one or two, one or two things <laughs> one or two uh, to things share to with us. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm doing great. Okay. So, mm, read your blog. You know, on Friday, Nessa and uh, Mrs. Olufunke were having a conversation about the old Baba Joshua story. And it's like everywhere on social media now, that's what it's, it's trending. And then people have different opinions to it and all and all. And all. So, rolling off <laughs> <laughs> on that. Okay, so um, something has been in my mind for a while. And it's this issue of child domestic violence. So, I stumbled on a post from an acquaintance about a month ago. So she stays in Kogi State. And she was sharing an experience that is this small boy that comes around to sell locust beans to them every afternoon. Like everybody knows the boy. They said he's very good at, you know, you know the children that will tell you, uh-uh, buy now. You tell them you still have one at home. They'll tell you. So they didn't see the boy for a while, almost two weeks. Nobody saw the boy. So she was wondering that what is going on. Like how would a child not be, like is the boy sick? People had different thoughts and all of that. Only for her to, you know, meet this boy on the road one day and she saw that the boy was in pain but she could not like pick what was she was asking him what was wrong she said he's not feeling well so the boy left that day and the next day <laughs> she now heard that the person the boy was staying with actually used a hot iron to burn the boy's back like she you know when you plug mm. iron and then she put it on the boy's back so obviously that time that she saw the boy was in pain and also, she saw the boy the next day. She was calling him. He was running away. Eventually, she was able to catch the boy. What's, what happened to your back? She opened his back. And then he was like, no, um, it was hot water. He was trying to have his bath. Hot water poured on his back. But then the mark was there. And when they pressed further, people started asking questions. They said because the boy did not complete his sales for one day. Wow. That was why the person he was staying with did that to him. Like, when I saw the picture... Like, this boy should not be more than 9, 10. You have to see his back. Like, you, if it's just something that you just touch and you remove, you would know. This one was, it was obvious this person pressed the iron to this boy's body. And also, I'm sure she told him to lie that, you know, that's what happened. But the story did not add up. So, they were able to reach out to some people. That's why she actually came to Facebook to cry that. She just needs people to help her and all of that and then they were able to sort out the issue but then it got me thinking this is not the first time something like this is happening we've had different stories of people you know just having one or two things so it now boils down to the fact that it's not every time you have to take somebody's child in if you know you do not have the capacity to care for a child don't take the child in it's not by force so i was having a conversation with a friend one and told me that in their village if you get to train up to five kids they give you a chief and sit tight so it means that some of these people even in lagos here they don't have a good life they are still struggling but then you go to the village pick somebody's child and they bring them to lagos and make them suffer mm. because it's just sometimes on allen avenue at night you see these girls 10 12 around 10 they'll still be there what are they doing there they are trying to complete the sales for the day it's not by force because some of these people actually that take people in one thing i've learned is an abused person is a potential abuser yeah so it means that some of them they lived with people so all those experiences all those things that the the training they've given unconsciously they begin Mm. to do it to other people's children and it all boils down to the fact that sometimes as parents stay with your child this month is you know may 27 will be everybody celebrating some of these kids they don't have parents to celebrate children's day with even if you do not have enough that's why they say if you cannot care for a child, try not to give birth. I beg. Try try not to give birth. But then, even if you have little, I know you want to give the child a very good life. But then, don't just give your child to anyone. Don't just give it. Every time my grandma tells us a story, she, my grandma will tell us that, uh, that the reason why she did not go to school was because they came to Korea from the village. And the person told her that she was taking her to Lagos, you understand, to study. And she was thinking, the person was going to take her to school. When she got to Lagos, she said what she was doing was frying Gary. And that is what she did for God knows how many years. So it all, it all boils down to the fact that it's not by force to take care of somebody's child. And again, before you can even care for somebody's child, ensure that you are financially, emotionally 
correct. <laughs> now, let me just put it that way because it's true now. Because you just see every time on social media you are saying they did this to one child, they did this to another child. Please, parent, try to take care of your child. Let your children stay with you. It might not be easy, but I just feel nobody can take care of you like your parents. Of course, there are some ca- some parents are even nonchalant and all of that. But then, at the same time, and then if you have somebody's child in your care, be extra careful. Like treat them the way you would treat your own child, and all of that because it's just very. Because when I saw the picture, I like I could not cry because I was like, what is going on? You have to see the boy's back because he did not complete sales. And for exa- some of these children, their parents will actually think that they are studying. Yeah. Maybe the boy is in one school or the other. But then the boy is there and because he did not complete sales for one day, you plug iron and put it on his back. Parents, just, so, just mm-hmm. kind of like touching on what you said, um, as much as also like you said, some parents are nonchalant. Mm. Some don't even have the means to actually True. take care of them. Is the reason why they do send them off to other people. people but one thing i've also seen is sometimes they can be very trusting in terms exactly. of my, my, sister. my my sister is the person i'm person. giving this child to or is my cousin or is my family member but one thing i just want to say is once you give your kids to someone always try to check on them check. even if it means a trip or two check on them because see when you see them you can know it's different from talking to someone on phone mm-hmm. i can okay. be talking to you on phone and not not be yes. my 100 self but when you see me you know no. so i just feel like that also would probably help mm-hmm. um in in some situations True. you know just seeing your kid maybe every now and again you can gauge the situation and you can tell if they're they are fine where they are because as much as they know that they are suffering at home, they would rather they would tell you, Mommy, I want to go. And be very conscious when your kids start telling you that, especially if they are staying with someone. Rather let them suffer with you that than for them to for them to know, be mal- mal- When I went for an outreach recently, sometime in April, and one of the girls that I got the opportunity to counsel was telling me that she has not spoken to her mom for three years. And she said the reason is the person that picked down her siblings from her mom is currently sick. I think she has a terminal disease or something. So she doesn't want them to communicate with their mom because if they tell their mom... So what she did is where she was living, she moved away from there. She did not let the mother know that they've moved. So they are staying somewhere in Ogun State. The, the children, they don't. their mom don't... She doesn't know where they are. She cuts... She blocks the mother. She No, the mother is... I'm sure she's obviously trying to reach her kids, but then she cannot find them. Wow. For three years... <laughs> so it all boils down to responsibility, responsibility and and love love for human beings like i always say this thing when we talk about issues like this it all boils down to love you know not because you're a man or because you're a woman or because you're older or because you're younger or because you're white or because you're black just love for a human being yeah love for fellow human beings anyway thank you so much <laughs> to your c4 for blogging about sure. that that's how it is is the praise the clock show 10 a.m west african time every monday tuesday wednesday thursday and friday every weekday right here on praiseworldradio.com we have all the very best of news gist music and so much fun all right so make sure you catch us every weekday follow us on social media twitter instagram at praiseworld underscore and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel on youtube praiseworld tv oh it's time it's praise the clock i'll see you